Mr. Bigley. Hey there guys and gals, it's Grabeagly with another episode of Gaming with Grabeagly and I'm once again playing another random one shot from over on Itch.io. This is a game called The Bookshelf Limbo and it looks like this game is very simplistic. It's like a visual novel style game. I guess the premise is that it's your father's birthday so you go to a bookstore in search of a comic to buy him which is a gift I probably wouldn't gift my own father but according to a lot of the comments on the game page this is a game that's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more about the relationship that kids and their fathers have or kids and their parents have and there's a lot of interesting book titles and choices there so I'm very curious about this one I'm not sure if this is going to be like an emotional type of game or what the deal is but let's go ahead and start in English my Espanol is not very good so let's get started hi I was looking for a comic for my father I don't think he's ever read one that I know Something short and self-contained would be ideal. Ah, okay, so this protagonist also has a father who doesn't read comics. That shelf? Oh, that looks perfect. Thank you. All right. Ooh, I really like the animation of this so far. Very cool. We're like some sort of, uh, I don't know, like wolf dog person? I'm not quite sure. Oh, this is so cool. So you just scroll over different parts of the bookshelf and it lights up. And I'm guessing those are the different titles I can choose from. Really interesting stuff. Okay, so we'll start on the uh, top left here. The Forensics Artist. Ooh, interesting. Muhammad is an eminence in the field of digital forensics. He has been tasked with dismantling the lies of a virtual cult, which is filling the web with doctored images of otherworldly beings. Failing to prove them fake, the Forensic Artist and the reader will gradually dwell into a spiral of madness and self-doubt. Wow, that sounds so it's like a psychological thriller with some like sci-fi elements or something from the sounds of it. That's kind of cool. I like that the, I didn't realize that each of these titles was going to have like a whole bunch of like synopsis and I guess online reviews, quotes on the back. Maybe this one put the book back. Okay, so we get to choose based on what the book is. Now, as a disclaimer, I am someone who has somewhat of a weird relationship with my own dad, only due to the fact that uh, he was very busy growing up. He's someone that I absolutely respect. His work ethic is like none other, and he's someone that I love deeply. But he also wasn't around a ton when I was growing up. Like, I remember fun family vacations, and he was around for some of the holidays and whatnot. But even some of those major holidays, because he was a doctor who worked a lot and did a lot of emergency work and stuff like that, he actually wasn't around as much as I would have liked him to be. So as a result, and as an adult, I've done my best to try to be as amiable and as close to him as I can because I realize how much he sacrificed while I was growing up to make sure that I was living a nice life and that I was taken care of, etc. And it's sort of like a weird dynamic to have. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate with that. Uh, you know, fathers going off to work, mothers going off to work, parents in general going off to work to make sure that they're providing for you and then not really being in your life quite as much. But as a result, like I know a bunch about my dad and we are very close, but we're not as close as, you know, a lot of kids out there that I see. Like he taught me how to throw a baseball and things like that. But I do know his his taste in things. And this does sound kind of cool. Like this is something I would read, but I don't think this is one that he would read. But let's read the online reviews anyway, just to see what they're like. I read that Bakir Kwa, uh, Kwawam, I don't know if I'm saying that name right, Kwam used actual footage from federal investigations. I had nightmares for months after finishing this comic. Extremely recommended if you, as many of us, know that there is something else beyond this dimension. Arachnid Nibiru <laughs> left that review. Like X-Files, but in front of a computer. Ha ha ha. Johnson Owo. <laughs> oh, this is great. These fake reviews are incredible. Enjoyable even with its recurrent pitfalls into ableism. Oh no. <laughs> it's time we stop stigmatizing mental health issues in media, guys. Absolutely, Terminator Lara. We need to stop stigmatizing mental health issues. Uh, all right, and then read quotes on the back was the other one. Uh, these names are, are so hard for me to say. I'm already bad enough with like English names. Uh, Gurpegui and <laughs> Bakur uh, Kwawam, uh, Kawam, I, I keep saying that with like an extra W in it, work in perfect tandem for this heart-stopping thriller. Elias Fraguis, uh, Paroxysm 2002. What a, what a glowing review. Easily among the top five horror works of 2015. Bone Marrow Magazine. What a hell of a magazine title that is. Again, Bakir Kawam, 
postulates himself as a true master of the genre. Sebastian Lafleur of Derangeant Podcast. Very interesting. Okay, I'm going to say put this book back for now. Let's look at the other titles. I'm really loving the music in this game and the really chill laid back atmosphere. There's not like a timer that's like telling me, hey, you got to pick out one of these super quick. I feel like I can probably browse this the same way that I would like if I was actually shopping for a book for my dad. Let's keep looking. Yeah, let's keep looking indeed. All right, so let's just move, I guess, left to right here. Let's see what this one is. Oh, already, already know that dad's not going to want this one. The Garden of Your Mind. Do you struggle against your inland empire? Is your internal dialogue indomitable? Do you wish you could keep those intrusive thoughts in check? Maybe you should stop fighting them and lose yourself into the Garden of Your Mind. Yeah, I, I feel like... I feel like this is gonna be the one that like he's not really into. I do want to check the online reviews just because they're so funny. Colors in this book are out of this world. The philosophy is quite bland though. Terminator Laura always has some criticism for everything. I've read it about 40 times already. A masterpiece. G Pistachio 87. <laughs> My mother loved this comic book. Share it with your loved ones. Dahlia Daggers. All right. So my dad is someone who definitely isn't really into like mind philosophy very much. He's a pretty straightforward guy. He is someone who is not afraid to speak his mind, etc. So I really don't feel like this is the one for him. But even though we're gonna like find a bunch of titles that are probably not gonna fit what we're looking for right away. This game is so chill. This is perfect. I mean, obviously right now in the real world, things are a little bit crazy. And whenever you watch this video, you know, some things that are going on currently might have passed. It might still just be a difficult time for you or something. But this is almost a nice way to self-reflect on relationships that you have, not just with parental figures, but anyone in your life. This is a nice way to sort of take your mind off of some of the gloomier, darker, heavier things, and maybe focus on those real connections and bonds that you have with other people. I kind of like that. This is like a nice way to sort of chill out away from the world for a bit. <laughs> All right, this one looks badass. This might be the winner right off the bat. Burnt Bridge Redemption. It's like a freaking action comic. This is, I mean, these are the types of like action movies my dad loved when I was growing up. We used to watch a lot of these together where it was like Jean-Claude Van Damme or like Steven Seagal or like any of those sort of like action hero dudes who were going around and whooping ass all the time. You know, Th these are definitely the types of things that I think he'd be probably more into. He was also like a big fan of like the Bourne Identity series. So that this reminds me of that. A man on a mission. Demons walk among us. They feed on our thoughts and disguise as our women. We pour their drinks. We clean their cars. But that's about to end. Ryan, armed with two swords and a cannon bike, will hunt these beasts off. The ill city of doom. Okay, so a little bit post apocalyptic and sci-fi-ish. Uh, might not be up my dad's alley completely, but maybe the action would be something that he'd really enjoy. Uh, especially with like the cannon bike. Uh, he was very, very into James Bond when I was a kid, and obviously James Bond is known for all the crazy spy gadgets that he has. I remember watching one of the Pierce Brosnan movies where he has, like, rockets in his car that, like, shoot out and, like, blow up other cars, and my dad was just like, man, that would be so cool to have when, like, traffic's bad. <laughs> so this one kind of reminds me of him. Let's do more online reviews. Uh, you're in for a ride with Burnt Bridge Redemption. The gore is exquisitely depicted and the stories have something that just resonate with you. A masterpiece for the ages. The Emperor PT. So I'm guessing that this one, if there's like gore and like darkness in this, this is almost like a, a dark, gritty, noir style, like Sin City style action comic. So maybe not quite what my dad's looking for, but this is probably the closest we've come across so far. Visually stunning. Needs more blood. 12 out of 10. Crew FDF. Ryan adventures are a guilty pleasure of mine, even if the writing is a bit problematic. The action is really well drawn and the main character is stupidly cool, says Grey Shock. Those are some pretty good reviews right there, but again, I'm going to put the book back for now. We'll remember where it is on the shelf so we can grab this and maybe look at it later if we decide to come back to it. But this is so cool. Like, how many titles do I have left? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
seven titles so we can get through those we can look at all these i like this again this is so chill this is such a nice way to sort of like turn off like the noise that's going on in the world and like have my brain just focused on something really simplistic but also very pure like this is a pure experience in some ways because i'm thinking of it in the context of my own dad this is something that kind of feels personal and i like that a lot about it Essays on empathy. <laughs> I feel like you would get the wrong message if I got him this one. Like, he'd be like, what are you trying to say? Am I not empathetic? <laughs> Three stories by the Deconstruction Creative Collective. Tackling themes as diverse as body horror and self-acceptance. Oppressive dynamics in a heteronormative couple. And the struggle of a gay hitman working at a flower shop. Hmm. That, I mean, that sounds really interesting to me. But again, I don't know if that's up to uh, my dad's standards. He's sort of a guy who's... He's a little bit old school and he's not like, you know, unaccepting. He's not intolerant or anything like that. But he's definitely someone who sort of like he doesn't need to regularly announce that he's accepting of other people. He just lives his life and he sort of goes by the philosophy I've learned to go by. It doesn't matter what walk of life you have. As long as you're someone who's being kind to others, looking out for others, etc., then he's going to accept you and he's going to relate to you just as, you know, regularly as he does anyone else. So it doesn't really matter what your background is in that way. It's one of those things where he just, like I said, straightforward to the point kind of guy. So I'll read the online reviews, but I don't think he's going to want this one. Can't stand these pretentious. <laughs> if it weren't for the famous publishing label, they'd be dead on a ditch. The Hitman story is cool, though. The Emperor PT. Damn the Emperor PT. Very strong divisive opinions here about this one. Can't get enough of this team. I just wish they didn't take that long to release their stuff. Three years to make this? Come on, Haruki Low. Ah, come on, you can't rush art though, Haruki. You can't, you can't rush something that people are putting their mind, heart, and soul into. Not bad, Glass Collector 444. Very helpful review, Glass Collector. There's always one, obviously. Mandatory reading material for my students, Rico Albe. Interesting. I mean, again, essays on empathy. You get a better understanding of the world, all the kindness out there, all the ways that you can feel other people's suffering and understand them and, and just be more accepting, etc. It's good stuff, but again, I, I don't feel like this is the one that my dad's going to resonate with. So that was the far right one, I believe, right? Or am I wrong on that? We'll click this again. Oh, no, far right one is Alberto. I read you and I feel more free. Interesting. A series of illustrated poems about hidden pleasures, caressing a silky rug, the smell of wet earth, picking a good melon at the fruit store, words and images to reframe everyday actions and discover a new lens to enjoy life. Ah, so it's one of those things where it's like, enjoy the small things, let them build up in a really good way within you. Again, another book that I just don't feel like would resonate with my father too much. Illustrations are cool, but the poems are pretentious garbage. <laughs> I'd rather just spend an afternoon browsing DeviantArt. Ha ha, guide XXX 230 it seems like the type of review someone with that type of name would leave <laughs> dumb shit the Emperor PT is such an ass wow this dude like hates everything he's like oh, I'm grumpy about everything in life Ugh. I am in love with the author's sensibilities I keep coming again and again to this book Alberto I re I read you and I feel love sunflowers and wine oh that's wholesome that sounds like someone who actually got something out of the book and I'm not saying that Emperor PT is an invalid in you know their opinion obviously you know your opinion is very subjective everyone's entitled to their own not everyone's gonna have the same tastes because heaven forbid that would make this entire world very boring if we all liked and disliked the exact same things but also there's a way to go about it without being a dick so <laughs> we're gonna put this one back again not for my father Start on the far left of this one. We're going to click this very bright looking My Cute Neighbor. Oh, that's adorable. Little kitties on the cover. I would get this one. Uh, Popinski is a very cute cat, and he loves to look at the street from outside his window. For the first time, the integral work of critically acclaimed comic strip artist Ren uh, Renaud Patel collected in a deluxe edition. Aw, that's really cute. Uh, again, I, it sounds like it's maybe like slice of life, and that's not really my dad's speed most of the time. He's a fan 
fan of action stuff. He's a fan of like police procedurals. He likes some dramas, things like that, but sort of the uh, whimsical everyday life, slice of life stuff. Not not really his speed, but let's read these online reviews because this is where this is where the good content is into this game. I love it. I grew up reading Papinski's adventures every week. This edition is fantastic. I'm not a fan of the recoloring though, bars and so. Ah, uh, well, at least they left a good review about the content itself. I don't like Popinski. I'm afraid you don't have a soul, sir. Terminator Laura, you know, she has a couple good points here and there, it seems like, in her reviews, but at the same time, a little bit, a uh, little bit pretentious. A little bit, uh, you know, holier than thou. Unequivocally perfect, no matter how you look at it. The Emperor PT had something positive to say about this one. Guys, we got a freaking victory here. If something can win over the Emperor PT, it's probably all right here. I mean, that's, that's a really nice review. If you have something negative to say about Popinski, I will find you and I will fight you, says Marionetta. Uh, Netetta. <laughs> oh, that's funny. People defending their favorite artists and their favorite writers. Okay, so next one we go is behind my character model. The Golden Derelict. Interesting. An existentialist graphic dissection is the subtitle. Ooh, again, not sure if this is going to be uh, something my dad's going to enjoy. Father and son climb a remote mountain while the mission of restoring the family's old cabin. Uh, the waters around the place run gold and make flowers grow stronger and fruit to turn out more savory. Drinking the golden water allows father and son to visit each other's dreams and connect in a way they never expected to. That's a really interesting concept, but it is not something that's going to really be my dad's thing. This book uh, truly understands what it is to fail to meet your parents' expectations. The drawings are ugly, but I ended up in tears. <laughs> the drawings are ugly, but I ended up in tears. Well, that's good at least that it's like, hey, it it absolutely is something that like uh, has emotional impact regardless of the art. Like the content itself is still very powerful. Captain Revington said that. And that's so sad. That is so sad. So this is more of like a personal thing. Maybe not something that you would share with your father and be like, by the way, I always feel like I fail your expectations. I'm a big loser and you make me feel that way. Maybe not the best birthday gift for dad. Maybe not the best one, but maybe something to read in your free time. I like that a lot. By the way, I'm sorry that I'm not reading all the quotes on the back of the book covers as well, but that's something that you guys can check out as well if you decide to download this game. I'll leave a link down below in the description like I always do, but this has been really neat so far. They should stop conceding grants to hipster fucks with no talent. The Emperor PT! Come on! If you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. Get out of here. Get out of my reviews, man. What a marvelous deconstruction of the page. At first, the plot is hard to follow due to the uneric sequences, but on a second read, the subtext is just mind-blowing. Elvin Fairy Catcher. Oh, man. What a username. All right. Again, putting this book back. Uh, we are, have still not found the one that really, really clicks. Although, again, the action one, which I think is like here or here, that's going to be the good one for us. That's going to be the good one. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, this is definitely one that, uh, <laughs> oh, man, sex stories, this might not be, uh, this might not be the appropriate Father's Day gift, in my humble opinion, uh, regardless of context of the story itself. Sex Stories is a self-contained comic book anthology, erotic, explicit, irre irreverent, funny, and liberating. We talk about sex, sexuality, and gender from totally different perspectives. Here you won't find the typical, and if you go in, you have to keep an open mind. Again, my dad isn't someone who has a completely closed off mind or anything like that, but I feel like, you know, being like, hey, dad, happy birthday. Here's a comic about people just boning it does just, just stories about boning we might we might have an awkward moment him and i <laughs> i won't lie check for online reviews porn for social justice warriors disgusting says pablo pedro ah oh, come on pablo pedro 69 that's a troll's name right there get out of here sex stories made me reconcile myself with my body i reconnected with masturbation in, in a very intense way ha 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 cerrito <laughs> magia de fuego you know, a little bit of oversharing there, uh, Sarita, but I'm glad that it helped you re uh, reconcile with your body and made you feel, you know, more connected to your identity or whatever. I can't fault you on that part of it. 
probably the most erotic content produced in Spain. Uh, Marisol uh, Sione, I don't know how to say that last name. This series has furries in it. Five million <laughs> stars. <laughs> That's all you got to know. It's got some furries in it. So if you're a fan of furries and your dad is a furry, or if your dad is a fan of furries, there you go. This is the one for his birthday. <laughs> we'll put this one back for now though oh my god all right so i think we only have like two titles left yeah two titles left on the bottom shelf here pulsar code okay this one looks interesting the first ever magic treaty okay this is again not gonna be for my dad Treaty illustrated with sequential art written and designed by the mysterious author known only by pseudonym Witch Fortuna, circa 1960. Dare to explore this out of its time narrative piece about diviniza uh, divination, uh, me meditation, and cosmology. Apparently, I'm having trouble with English. But this is the type of book that uh, my dad, again, being a doctor and being a doctor for decades and decades at this point, he is very, very grounded in science. He's not someone who really has any sort of supernatural magic-based beliefs. So this isn't going to vibe with him very much. It sounds like an interesting concept, but again, it's not going to be for him. Uh, Sarita again with the review. This is the real deal guys chills up my spine every time i read that page well thank you for not having spoilers sarita very good spooky the emperor pt all right the emperor pt likes this one so it's either really really good or the emperor pt has the worst taste in the world and it's probably garbage uh <laughs> we need to stop already with the glorification of hippie drug induced fantasies esoteric garbage wow again some of these reviewers just like real life have incredibly incredibly abrasive opinions about things but hey you know to each their own all i gotta say about it is let people enjoy what they want to enjoy stop shaming people cringe culture's dead go away into your own hole and enjoy your own stuff and hopefully people won't do the same to you where they're they're angry at your taste <laughs> okay this one's for me definitely not my dad though neon ping pong lovers god i love the art on it already what <laughs> it's so great they are lesbians they are polyamorous they are unstoppable megan lola and cassie are the talk of the town and they plan to leave an impression at the augmented reality ping pong competition of la grand station the most famous space town in all of andromeda all right this one is for me absolutely i would read this in a heartbeat I love the manga art style. It's fantastic. It's like the 90s glowing, like 80s, 90s, uh, like neon aesthetic. My God, this girl at the top, I just want to be her. What a, <laughs> what a badass. Oh, man. All right. Online reviews. The characters are like so cool. We plan on cosplaying them at the next Bone Marrow Con <laughs> Stargazer Liliana. Uh, the themes are too in your face. This is just a marketing trap. Terminator Laura. Man, Terminator Laura oftentimes slips into that toxicity again. Like I said, the holier than thou. Like it's got to be just the right amount of pretentiousness. Shut up and take my money. I need sequels. Haruki Low. Oh, man. We, it's, it's obviously meant for weebs, but I'm all about it. Okay, so I think just based on all the titles, everything I saw, like I was talking about, Burnt Bridge Redemption. This is going to be the one. It's going to let my dad know that I'm thinking about him. I can be like, yo, this dude's got a comic bike. I, or I know you're not into comics, but he's got a cannon bike, dad. And cannon bike, very much like the badasses in the action movies we grew up with and this is like kind of cool you might be into this one so i think maybe this one maybe this one this will make him think comics are immature i used to love this but i'm not sure anymore or maybe get something with better ideas about masculinity interesting i mean yeah it's it's sort of like the stereotypical machismo in this one but again it would it would resonate with my dad more and show again that i i pay attention to what he likes and i know who he is um i'm gonna say i used to love this but i'm not sure anymore or this will make him think comics are immature i don't think he'll think comics are immature from this these are i i'd, I'd go with the the middle one i guess just because like i still love action comics and manga and anime and tv shows and movies as well but i don't watch them exclusively anymore like i did when i was a lot younger so let's do this one I used to love this, but I'm not sure anymore. Let's keep looking. Wait, no, I want. I wanted to grab it though. Is there not a way to grab it? Is there not a way to grab it? Do I have to like read the quotes on the back or something? On second thought, maybe this is the one, yes. Oh, it changes, okay. Yeah, let's grab this one. Maybe this one. Oh, so you can actually like, 
have your inner monologue about all of them uh, by picking each of them and saying maybe this one for so there's another thing you guys can explore when you decide to check this game out yourselves so uh, this is the one yep this is the one we found it I'll take this one yes it's a gift a uh, sticker to add on the wrapping oh wow okay uh, I love you I hope you like it I miss you or thank you for everything or I'm proud of you oh man okay um Ah, oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, I normally end every message to my parents with I love you. So normally I say thank you for everything because my parents have been there and done so much. And especially like I was saying in the beginning of this video that like as an adult, I reflect all the time on all the sacrifice my dad put himself through working as hard as he did, missing out on those family opportunities and things like that. Uh, I am very aware of that. So I do very frequently tell him thank you for everything that he's ever done for me throughout life. Uh, the support that that him and my mom have sent me repeatedly throughout life. But I also always end it with I love you um, because I do think that it's important to tell loved ones that you do indeed love them. I say I love you to my friends all the time because they're just important people in my life. Um, but I'm also I also tell him I'm proud of him all the time, too because I, I get very proud of all the work that he does and all the help that he puts into the world, being someone who's a doctor, helping other people, trying to make sure that their woes and their, their ailments go away. But I'm going to say thank you for everything, because I think that's that feels the most like something I would say to my dad right away. So that one, I, without, without stickers, thank you. Wait, what? Oh no, did I pick the wrong thing? Oh no. Was that or was that more of like to make me self reflect on my own relationship and bond with my dad? And no matter what you click, it says that there's going to be no stickers. Interesting. Goodbye. Was that it? That was the game. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. All right. So now I'm starting to understand why some of the comments on the game page were like, this is the type of game that like made me think really hard and made me reflect on like the relationship I have with my parents and stuff like that. <laughs> I just noticed, too, it says all covers were made by us except for Sex Stories magazine. Check out their cool project. Le look for Sex Stories. All right. So if you're someone who's, uh, you know, into the concept of that Sex Stories book, then there you have it. It's a real thing you can go out and support. But this was a really cool idea. This was very self-reflective. This was something that made me definitely think a lot um, and really just think about my lifetime with with the loved ones who have uh, supported me throughout life and the the highs and the lows of those relationships, the pros and the cons and everything that's happened to me and my family and and whatnot. It's it's wild. So kind of a cool game. Again, a nice laid back way to sort of take a break from all the noise and the pressure of the outside world right now. This has me feeling very calm, very relaxed, and also appreciating a lot of the little things uh, and sort of forgiving myself for some of the regrets that I've had. Like, uh, again, like I said, not knowing my dad as, as much as, as I've wanted to throughout the past, but, uh, you know, happier that I'm making an effort now in the present to reach out and, and let him know that I do care and that I do love him. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for the Bookshelf Limbo. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my video of this. Hopefully it was nice and calm. It was something that made you kick back, relax for a little bit, take your mind off of things. And like I said, you can enjoy this as well for free. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description like I always do. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And as always, it was great seeing you. Bye-bye. Sir, please.